How's it going, everybody? So, I completely laid out my entire get home bag or bug out bag, depending on how you guys view the term as such. But I have everything laid out, and I'm just going to quickly go down the line and just talk about what I have. Now, I'm not going to go into extreme detail about everything. If there's enough questions about something, I will go ahead and do that. But up front, right away, this is a long range get home bag for me. That's just kind of what I named it. Now, everybody has different terms for what they want to call things, but this bag is carrying me a long distance, not a typical get home bag, which is, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles. I'm hoping this bag, if needed, hopefully I don't ever need it, but if I do, carry me hundreds of miles. Now, that's a pretty impressive feat. I put a lot of time and effort into this. Some of this stuff may not work for all of you. You might think this is crazy, some of the stuff I put in there, or you might get some good ideas. That's the whole purpose of this video is for people to get ideas on what they want or maybe what they don't want to put into it. So I'm going to be using a laser pointer so you don't have to see my face, which most people don't want to see that anyways, but you just want to see gear and items like that. So the laser pointer is what I'm going to be using. So immediately up front, I'm going to start talking about everything, is the bag. This is an Eagle Industries Invader 50 liter bag. Um, good bag. I have a specific review just on it. If you want to know more about this bag, I will go ahead and put that in the description below. Go ahead and take a look at it. So moving up from there, I have a traditional BDU style poncho. Now, this is my particular reason I guess I carry it because it's versatile. You can use it for multiple different things and they work very well. While you have the backpack on, your poncho kind of drapes, drapes over the pack so you can kind of avoid your pack getting wet, which everything should be secured and stowed properly so water doesn't egress into that. But aside from that, moving on, I have toilet paper, which I probably should put some more in there, but that is all I have at the moment. Moving on, I have a specific maps for my general area where I will be operating at or possibly at. These will change depending on what region or location I go into. So if I'm going into a new location, different state, I will pick up that specific state or region's maps. I have contractor bags over here. I have two of them, the big thick mill ones, which are really helpful for ground mats or anything of the, of the type makeshift poncho, blah, 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 you, you get it. I also have a beanie, so cold nights, that's what I'll be wearing. Now, this bag will also transition from winter to summer, depending on the season. This is currently a summer loadout right here. Let me get that out of the way. Also above that, I have a headlamp, which is actually identical. Moving down here is the same exact flashlight which the flashlight is a streamlight. I'll post it in the link below. It takes three different battery cells, CR123s, AA's, and AAA's, which is really cool. Also, I have an assorted amount of silver. I think there is seven ounces of silver in here, along with a assorted amount of cash, which cash is always good to have on, a Mora knife, which is really good. I prefer them. They're super lightweight along with a ACR, which this is um, a beacon or a GPS beacon, which I always carry them on me all the time, which they are very handy. If I don't need this, say EMP or grid down or electronics don't work, I can ditch that, no issues. I also have a spare set of glasses. Unfortunately, I've been plagued with my eyes not working 2020 like everybody's. And if you look closely, they are BCGs, the old school military ones. Yes, I've been in for a little bit of time to get issued those. Moving on, it's going to be off. I have a little bit of bug spray, which if you don't have it, completely worth the wait. Just take my word for it. Moving on from that to the right side over here, this is a trauma kit. So this is a smaller trauma kit. It, it does look a little large on here, along with a cat tourniquet. I have a single cat over here. Now I'll discuss what I have in that in a later video. Moving down in this general area, this is a solar panel. 
So this recharges, it's specifically meant to recharge my batteries, which are over here. These are all rechargeable double A's. Yes, they are a lot, as you can see over here. And triple A's that are in double A sleeves. So they mimic double A's, but they actually are triple A's. Also, I have a battery bank down here that can allow me to charge USB, anything USB, and with double A's, which is very cool. You put double A's into it, and then you charge any device you want off of that. So the whole reason of that, having that much electronic capability, is moving down here to PVS-14 night vision. So this is my, or particularly, that's what I like to run. This is like one of the sole pieces of my bag is operating at night. You will not see me moving during the day because daytime normally means more people. People sleep normally at night, especially say a grid down scenario or some kind of catastrophic event. People are probably gonna be limited by electricity, meaning they will go back to the old ways of operating during the day, sleeping at night. I will be doing the opposite to get home. Less people means less scenario or a less chance of me getting harmed by someone. With that PVS-14, I also have a OpsCore bump helmet down here. That is how I'm going to mount it, whether it be driving or walking around along with the J or the J arm is attached and then the Rhino mount right here. Moving on, this is kind of a chest rig or a hill people gear rig. This is how I conceal carry while working with my backpack. It is very difficult to conceal carry if you have a waistband. You cannot put a firearm in there. It is very difficult. You could try, you probably can do it, but it's very uncomfortable with a lot of weight. It is, I carry a Glock 19, bump the camera mount like a professional, but I carry a Glock 19 along with a magazine inside it, along with two extras, along with a uh, flashlight mounted on that, like I said, operating at night. Now, these items right here as I'm outlining, these items will stay in this rig. So if I have to ditch everything, I will have smaller items like this, like a note, right in the rain notepad, flashlight, also a compass, extra batteries, normal, not rechargeable, but just normal batteries, small chem sticks, and this is a small survival kit. Has everything basics I need just to uh, have keep life if needed. It's not the best, but it's a small enough footprint. Along with ranger beads, if you're familiar, you can count um, your distance with ranger beads so you know how far you're going off of your maps. So all that mini, all that stuff is in this small chest rig, not attached to this. Like I said, if I have to ditch it, I can. I'd rather not, but in case. Moving back up, this is a fix it kit for all the material, including clothing and bags. This is a fix it kit. It can fix primarily anything, duct tape, zip ties, uh, needle, thread, um, buttons, you know, adhesive glue, things like that, large safety pins, the heavy duty military ones that can fix pretty much anything. Just get it kind of by until I can get a better fix for it. Along with smaller things like a mirror bottle opener, or a can opener actually for like tuna cans or anything else like that. Moving over, I have two sharpening stones. I'm de they're pretty lightweight, but I think I'm just going to carry one, which is the fine, not the coarse. And that is gonna be for maintaining my knife. I don't think I need that, but if I'm gonna be traveling long distance as in hundreds of miles, I would probably want to carry them. Moving up, there's small roll of duct tape, very small. And then moving up from that, which is a fire kit. Everything to start a fire, as in uh, a lens properly to use the sun rather than using other material like matches and lighter in case of other things. Moving up is food procurement. So these are the fish hook automatic sets. I forget what they're specifically called right off the bat, but they uh, are an auto set fish hook. So you can just set them down and then when a fish tugs on them, they will deploy the hook automatically and up your chances of getting food while you're not present. So a um, mechanical means of me nodding, not needing to be present to get food. Moving over to medical, this is dental and foot care and a little bit of other things like band-aids and some first aid stuff. 
but mainly dental is because that can really screw you over on a hike is dental and feet. Those are the two things that I really focus on. This is a titanium stove. It's one of the square ones. I forget who makes it off the top of my head at the moment, but it is a titanium stove. Moving over from the stove, it's going to be a Keith Titanium Canteen with Cup. Super ultra lightweight. It is a little bit expensive, but for the weight, that is awesome. Titanium is a really good feature for that and for the weight, and I prefer it rather than stainless steel. Moving over, I have a smart water bottle, which this ties in perfectly to the Sawyer Mini and the the squeeze and the bag and everything like that. I prefer using that. If you can see closely, it also has Luco tape wrapped around it for also more foot care or hand care if needed. Moving down, I have paracord, which obviously ridgeline other fixing items and a hundred different uses. I also have a small handsaw for firewood if needed. I'm going to try not to make fire if I need to, depending on the scenario and what is going on around me. But if you need to utilize or a lot of firewood, a saw is definitely more capable than an axe because you can just look it up. I just prefer it. It's my opinion. Moving down from that, I have a specific AR-22 conversion kit. Normally, I run a AR pistol with me, depending on my state and the legalities. I just prefer it. Me being active duty military and law enforcement, I have a little bit more opportunities with training and everything like that. So, 22s are much lighter than 5.56. Of course, you can carry more rounds, game procurement, and other things like that. Awesome capability to have, and I really enjoy it, so it definitely stays with me. Moving over from there, these two items are identically the same, and it's trip line and a specific sound marker that uses, it's like a trip wire pretty much. It uses uh, shotgun primers, and when it the line is pulled out, makes a loud noise, of course. So this is for me sleeping and providing security at my camp. So I know who's around or if someone's coming or something going on like that. Moving back up to the right, this is a Snug Pack Stasha, a very lightweight shelter or tarp. Awesome, very lightweight, almost fits in a cargo pocket, and it does have a significant footprint to keep rain, paired especially with the rain poncho if needed, a very solid shelter system. Along with, up on the right, is the Wooby or the poncho liner. Now, I prefer, ultimately prefer this during the summertime for my region and my climate where I am at due to it not getting super cold, but enough that this paired with my layers, which I'll go over in a second, will handle temperature. Now, like I said, this is a summer setup. I also have a winter setup that I may show later on down the line. Moving to clothing, I like smart wool products or darn tough. So as you see here, these are long johns, smart wool, top and bottoms along with two sets of socks and two sets of shirts. Wool antimicrobial, it is merino wool, it is not scratchy. I love this stuff and I use it in my daily life all the time. Moving down from that is going to be my food. So these are smaller lifeboat based rations. Ultra lightweight but have a ton of calories in them. Now they don't taste that great but they do pack on the calories along with two cliff bars and then down here this is kind of my little cheat bag so this has coffee and other drink mixes along with tea because once you filter water out of a source which i guarantee you guys know what i'm talking about it kind of tastes fishy and i don't really like that taste so like i said i have this down here as kind of a luxury item to get that taste out of there and to give me a boost i also have cider and other mixes like orange juice and things like that just to keep me going. Over here, this is a, it says 24 hour ration kit, but I have modified it to be about 48, maybe 60 hours worth of food. And this is sealed in Mylar designed to be stored in vehicles for the temperature rating from going down in the winter time, being very cold and all the way up 
very, very warm in a vehicle so the food won't spoil. It's mainly dehydrated. I can get into it at another time. Awesome kit. And I really enjoy the amount of food that uh, packs in there and being how small it is. So if I recall, I'm pretty sure that is everything that I can see that I just went over. So please post your comments in the comment section. Give me a like if you found anything in here informative or if you like something, give me a thumbs up and tell me what it was or tell me what you didn't like or you don't understand because I more than likely can talk to you about it. Now I know this video kind of went a little bit long. I wasn't trying that, but this is what, I, what I'm showing you. This is what I got. I hope you liked it. If you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button because there's a lot more details coming out on specific items of what I use. I actually real world use this stuff. I go out and there's going to be more videos coming up on specific items what I use. So thank you very much everybody. You have a great day.